Hello everybody, today I'm going to be doing a lighthouse scene, it's going to be a loose lighthouse scene, won't take all too long hopefully. I'm also going to add in maybe a few figures, so a couple of figures down the front. I thought it would just be nice to change up the scene a little bit, it looks a little bare at the moment, though at the same time I don't want to take away from this beautiful sky. So another thing I'm going to do is also go through this new palette that I've got, so this is a 17 well palette. Uh, created by a company called Meaden. They haven't paid me or anything to do this review. I just wanted to actually get a, a larger palette to give it a try. Now I've always used a smaller palette. And this is the normal palette that I use from Schmincke. And um, it's a kind of an open up, fold out sort of style which gives you four wells and uh, obviously there's some smaller wells here which I've used to actually put more paints and this is getting a little bit too much and I think for smaller paintings this is great and I haven't actually had a problem with bigger paintings too because I tend to do a lot of my mixing on the paper however I wanted to give this a try I don't have a porcelain palette and uh, although I did have a smaller etcher palette which had I think about 30 I think 80 18 to 30 well, uh, wells in a very very small round um, they called it a mini palette. I wanted something larger to suit maybe a larger painting, something that you can use in the studio. I also like the feeling of the paint on porcelain and just uh, it, it, it just looks a lot nicer and you can see through and um, examine the color better. It doesn't uh, form in this sort of weird beads and stuff like that as well using plastic palettes. So this is 9 by 12 inches, so this is my hand by comparison. So it's about an A4 size for those of you watching in Australia as well. So anyway, I'm going to give it a go and you're going to see how this uh, palette works out and you'll also get to see how I do this uh, approach, this lighthouse scene. So I'm going to draw firstly the horizon line. Now it runs around about halfway through the page but I'm going to reduce that down a little bit because I do want more of uh, uh, just more of the sky in there I'm hoping to put in a bit more of that sky so another thing I'll do is perhaps add in uh, you know a, a boat or something like that here just a sailboat off in the distance and you can change these a little bit as well just to make them some smaller and some larger uh, kind of like that I think something like this um, would help to just change up the scene a little bit. I always love to change things around, as you guys know. And of course, we have a bit of the land here. It's very rocky sort of land. Okay, the drawing here is really quite minimal. There's not all that much that you need to put in here. Most of this is just going to be sky. So this is a bit of that and uh, the land. And normally, it's just uh, bits of rocks and things that are out there. As well so it's something that I can indicate more with uh, the brush and things later now here comes the interesting part we have to get in the lighthouse and I do want to make it larger than it is in the actual photograph it's one of those things that uh, look in the photograph because there's a lot of detail in there I think it looks fine as is but with your painting uh, depending on what you want to focus on I do want to create a little bit more of an impression of this lighthouse and uh, the light also comes from that right hand side. You can see there's a little bit, it's almost from the right back. So yeah, a lot of these buildings, a lot of these rocks are kind of backlit as well. So there's not a huge amount of detail uh, that needs to go in here. However, we do need to pay attention to the little details that are actually uh, there. So, um, you know, look, I'm just drawing it in and that's just a kind of triangle. Look, I'm just putting a little triangle on top and, the, the, and then you've got these kind of little bits that go up into the top of the lighthouse, a bit of a rectangle there, and then the bottom, which is uh, basically this sort of shape here. So it's almost like a cylindrical shape that gets wider at the bottom. So that's about all uh, I think that we need to, to put in there. I mean, you've got a little bit of detail on the actual lighthouse to indicate like a door or something like that, which we can um, also put in. Um, there's a couple of windows on the sides of the lighthouse like that. Um, apart from that, I, I don't really see, see the need to do all uh, that much else. I mean, we've got some of these boats and things out the front um, at the back. And also in the front, I'm going to just put in some of these rocks and this is going to just be... Uh, quite loose. We've got one rock here uh, coming across the scene like that. There's a larger 
uh, perhaps a larger rock coming in here on the on that side okay coming out of the scene we've got a big kind of rock over here and uh, that is going to this is going to be an interesting one because we're going to have a darkness some darkness behind um, here you know there's the top part of that rock as well keep it very very loose and um, the easiest thing about rocks is that they come in all different shapes and sizes so you can't really get it wrong okay so just try to get in maybe a top section of some of these rocks and then a back section like this that way we can get in some different uh, highlights and that sort of thing okay so here's one there's a larger rock that sort of just sticks out like that and then uh, another bit that comes out there like this and then comes out there for that one there they all kind of overlap with each other um, you know there's even one here that has a darker section over on this side too okay and of course we have figures we have figures and uh, well they're not in here at the moment but I do want to try add some in so I'm thinking we might put them um, we might put them around about here. Let me just, we'll just uh, kind of estimate roughly. And uh, this scene also is going to be a kind of um, top-down scene. So we do have perhaps um, these figures. They usually the heads will be on the horizon line, but because we are looking from a top-down sort of angle, we're going to find that there's just less, um, less of that going on. So the heads are going to be below the horizon line, kind of looking down from a higher vantage uh, point so you know we've got a figure there and we might have a, a figure just sitting here okay just looking out from this rock i think this is a nice little indication um it's nothing too too uh, fancy and and too complicated at all okay so that's about it for the drawing we're going to go in to the painting now so let's go ahead and uh, firstly we're going to have to figure out what color uh, sky we want to put in here and really also what I want to do is make sure that I've got enough uh, water in this whole scene because we're going to paint a lot of it wet to wet <clears throat> I've got a large mop brush here and what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to really just go straight into it and, and start painting this whole area. I'm also going to go over the top of the lighthouse and hopefully what I'll do is just lift out some paint later. I don't want to ruin this wash by uh, trying to cut around too much of the lighthouse, that kind of thing. So just clean water into this area. I've got a hair on the, the paper. It's so annoying when that happens. Um, but just going over the entire sheet, even as we go down the bottom uh, as well. So, and remember with some of this stuff, if we come over, if we cut over the white, we can also use a bit of gouache later to bring out uh, some highlights. So just a, a layer of water, clean water over everything. Keep it very nice and, uh, wet okay especially in the sky we're going to need a lot of water in the sky and let that water soak in okay not too much but just enough so that that the paper has a nice um, even sheen over the top and this is going to allow us to get in some uh, great wet and wet effects as we go through so the first thing I'm going to do, it's a kind of, um, looks like it's going to, it's, it's almost like a nighttime scene or getting to night. Um, so perhaps around six o'clock, seven o'clock, something like that, bit of a sunset. And the first thing I always like to do with sunset scenes is to put in the light first, because one of the things you risk is when you start off doing all the blue and the dark bits up the top, it can start... Uh, interfering and mixing around with the yellows down the bottom or you get a bit of the blue onto the yellow and then it turns green so that's the first thing I'm going to do now let's have a try at this palette let's have a look so I've got myself um, let's have a look here let's let's pick up a little bit of this lemon uh, Hansa yellow 
These are all Daniel Smith colors. Hansa yellow over here. Okay, now I love this large sort of well that I can just mix up and play around with. With that, so you got the hairs falling off still. And uh, let's have a little try here. So I'm just putting in a, a little bit of yellow into that horizon line, like that. Okay, just a little bit out the back, like that, where the lighthouse is. And uh, another thing is that we want to also make sure we've got some of this in the water. Um, and the reason why is because we we just want to imply a bit of a reflection. It's not actually there in the reference photo. I think it might have been edited out or something like that. But uh, I do want to indicate that. Let's put in a bit of orange here on the side. Let's mix some of that in. Okay, a bit more water, a bit more orange. Um, this is a pyral orange. Okay, let's drop in a bit of that there. Okay, here in the horizon line. And notice how it's all just melting in very nicely, like that. Let's have a look at what else we've got. We've got uh, a tiny bit of like a pink sort of color actually um which i'll just mix up a bit of red and drop in up the top here just a little bit of this tiny bit of red and maybe some of this buff titanium as well and we use a bit of that red up the top for the lighthouse and i'm, I'm also just you know i'm not actually going over all the lighthouse i'm trying to keep some of it still a little bit uh, lighter okay a little more here in the at the bottom as well like this and, and notice I'm holding the brush near the end and moving my arm as well rather than moving the actual uh, the tip of the brush like that I'm using my arm to move a lot of this stuff around okay so having a look and just examining and looking at the colors you know I probably will put a bit more yellow in here as well okay a little bit more vibrancy in there it just looks a bit weak at the moment so I thought I'd add some more in there and of course some more a little bit more orange and um, that was a bit strong so I'm just going to change it up and remember as well that this will dull down a lot as we get through the um, you know as, as it dries off it will dull down a lot so don't worry if it, it does look a bit strong at the moment um, especially if we put in some of the cooler colors later on it's all just going to disappear you won't almost won't be able to tell at all but um, a lot of this stuff here that I'm doing here at the bottom it's so important because it helps um, create that soft effect and that's going to be the predominant sort of effect in this scene the softness that's uh, that's going on and in the water also I'm going to add some darker bits and pieces too so it's not just going to be warm colors but you know, I always love to get in the warm bits and pieces first. It just allows me uh, allows me a lot of wiggle room for later when we put in the blues and things like that. So let's drop that in. And I think what I might do is add in a tiny bit of a color called, um, where is it here? It is lavender. A little bit of this lavender color okay as we start off around here okay and very lightly sort of mix that in it's a lilac uh, oh, lavender is color so just dropping this in very lightly okay and um, feathering that in feathering that in wet into wet I'll put it over this side um, there's so much room here I'm not used to having so much room to mix around all my colors and the good thing is that it's allowing um, yeah, you just get a very pure sort of color mix without it, um, yeah, without it being um, interfered with with, uh, uh, with other colors. So um, it's also encouraging me to mix a little bit more on the palette as well, coincidentally. So I tend to do a lot of mixing on the paper. And uh, okay, that's looking that's looking good. Now, as we move up to the top, I'm going to get myself some more kind of darker pigment and for that I've actually got a bit of um, ultramarine here a bit of ultramarine blue I'm also going to use a color called imperial purple in some areas but I'll just drop in some of this ultramarine first and I want there to be quite a contrast between the ultramarine the darkness of the sky and this warmth as well so 
I'm going to mix up a fair bit of this color, it's this imperial purple color here. And normally what I do as well is that I, I tend to spray the paints down. I've forgotten to do it here, but I'll use a bit of, uh, yeah, just a, a, a spray bottle to just spray all these down so that it's just a little bit easier to pick up from the paper once you go in. So a bit of that purple, and I think the purple is good because it allows, uh, allows you to create some kind of complementary effect with all these all these uh, colors in here, especially these warm colors and the yellows further down the bottom. Okay, so one thing I really want to do is make sure that the mixture is blending downwards a bit as well, so that it's not all just, um, yeah, it's not all just darkness up the top. We can have a little bit mixing downwards as well. Okay, and different mixes of the paint. I even have a color called amethyst which is a uh, this color here I, I, you know just to experiment around it's a darker purple sort of color creates a little bit of a sparkle on the page as well okay so just putting this all in like this and you know of course you've got the the lighthouse which we're still trying not to um, touch all too much we can lift off a bit of paint uh, like so Okay, that's a good kind of idea. I'm just lifting off a little bit of paint to keep, um, you know, just to keep it a little bit lighter. But honestly, it's not, it's not a big deal. Because we can go back in there again afterwards and just lift off still. Um, that's just something that I, I, uh, I do at times. And just having a look, what else do we need to put in here? I'm thinking a bit more of that imperial purple here with some. Let's put in some neutral tint bit of neutral tint to darken this down more imperial purple and neutral tint okay and you know we've got a larger kind of cloud here darker clouds we need to make sure that we've got a good mixture of both our light and dark areas in here okay and uh, this one kind of goes up into the sky and uh, you know we've got some bits like this we've got a bit of Maybe darkness on this side, like that as well. Um, this side, the, the cloud sort of carries on into the sky and just disperses up the top there. You know, maybe a bit more ultramarine. It's too purplish in some areas. A bit more ultramarine in here. Okay, fantastic. Um, Great, <clears throat> and some softened, softened areas around here as well, um, just to shape these clouds a little bit better down the bottom. You know, we might have some smaller clouds here, just drop in a few little bits here on the horizon line, there's smaller clouds here and there, and that have made their way Kind of further down. I don't want to get rid of all that yellow as well. Be very careful with that. Now, as we move down the page, this is where we're going to um, just kind of replicate what we have on top. And what I mean by that is that I'm just dropping in little bits of this purple, as you can see, um, to create this kind of effect like that. And, you know, purple and blue, that's essentially the colors that I'm using here. And as we get here to the front, it just gets that little bit darker, okay? Um, but we're just dropping that in, dropping that into the whole uh, scene, okay, like this, to get in a little bit of this uh, coolness in the water and cutting around some of these rocks as well. We do have some figures in here, which I'm just also trying to cut around a little bit, okay? And uh, But the rocks... I do want to get in as well and uh, one of the things I'll do is add on a little bit of warmth on some of these rocks a tiny bit of warmth there, there is already a, a bit of warmth on there but uh, I think a little just some more up the front here would be nice okay and the reason why is because it's going to help with getting in some highlights later because we drop in some browns and things like that 
um, we can imply a little bit of a little bit of a highlight or something going through that area. Okay, fantastic. And uh, you know, down the bottom, you know, it's really it's really up to you. I do have a few different colors. Um, this is just a kind of a brown, a um, what is it? A raw umber. Okay, so just putting in a little bit of brown and and um, a bit of ultramarine as well. But what I'll do is also, you know, we can encourage it to granulate out a, a little bit by doing this sort of thing. So ultramarine is a granulating color. Also, these these kind of earth tones that I'm using, they do granulate out a fair bit as well. So it's a good, definitely a really good mix. And while everything's still wet, you know, a really good time to go ahead and do stuff like this. And another thing that we want to do is, while the painting is still wet, is to go in and add in the final bits and pieces, finishing touches of like little waves, little things like that, that we might want to indicate. So here in the water, I'm going to grab, you know, a bit of ultramarine and a bit of that purple. And I've got a smaller round brush. It's a number 10 round brush. It's certainly not as, um, you know, it's not the smallest brush but certainly smaller than that larger brush i was using before and notice what i'm doing here is that i'm just feathering in a few of these marks in the water okay and they're hopefully they're going to be sharper sort of marks as well which are indicating smaller waves and uh, the trick is i'm also drying the brush on the paper on the towel that i'm using drying it a little bit Letting it skip on the paper every now and then, okay, and then drawing it. Some of them just kind of squiggle downwards, okay, but just a little bit here and there, keeping it, keeping these lines um, all running in the same sort of direction as well, which is super important. And you know, while you while you're in there, let's drop in some darker bits. You know, I've just got some neutral tint and put it in with that purple. We can drop in some some darker bits here, as well. Okay, more so at the bottom, okay, but then we've got this blending effect where it just goes, um, you see, a bit darker and then lighter. So it's all soft, wet and wet effects, but later on down the track, we're going to emphasize this more by putting in some, also some uh, wet, uh, wet and dry effects, okay, once, once this layer uh, finishes drying. We can do this as well in the sky. So, you know, if you see any any areas that you want to draw out or just, uh, you know, darken a little bit, this is a good time to do it because the paint has almost dried up the top, but it allows you to um, put in some paint and without it kind of moving around too much, it's still going to spread out and do its own thing. But I, I think it's going to more or less uh, spread out in a very more controlled manner than it was before as the paper has almost dried up the top. So it's a, I mean, it's not damp. It certainly um, hasn't reached that damp sort of stage yet, but it's going to certainly getting very close to reaching that stage. So you notice uh, there are different timings I keep talking about and these timings make it so crucial for putting in bits and pieces, little effects and uh, things like that. To get in a particular effect, I find that you need to go in at a particular time. And I'm always just adding in more colors into the paper to try to get that right timing uh, to put in darker clouds and things and you know with wet and wet it's a beautiful sort of effect that I love using and it makes painting so much easier so you know there's a lot we can do here in the sky and uh, we can be also at risk of overdoing things so let's just um, once it looks kind of all right I think it's looking fine as it is we can we can look at maybe stopping and and uh, going from 
just leaving it as is but what I'm doing is just putting in a few little smaller clouds um, here near the horizon line and things like that as well but it's not you know it's not 100% necessary uh, certainly not 100% necessary okay um, with the lighthouse as well I'm gonna just lift out a bit of color in there like that uh, more so the base like this okay fantastic all right so we'll leave this to dry and we will put on the final colors okay this is dried off quite nicely and um, you'll notice there's a lot of granulation going on in here it's uh, lovely we've got the purples and the blues in the sky um, the orange and the yellow, they're non-granulating paint, so you can see how clear it is. And then when you get up the texture of the paper, as we put in some of those cloud effects, even here in the water, a little bit of these soft wet and wet effects, the granulation in here, uh, down the bottom as well, with some of these, uh, some of these rocks. So one of the things I uh, thought I'd rehash a little bit as well, I don't think I explained it as well before, is that the colors that you're putting in here, the darker colors that we're dropping in, when you're putting in paint into an already wet area, you want to be careful with the proportion of water to paint on your brush. So if the paper is pretty wet, we want to make sure that the paint that we're using is, is, uh, has, a, has a more viscous, a thicker sort of consistency than what's, a, what's already on the paper. So if you've got a very thin layer of this yellow, when you put in the the blues and some darker paints you want to make sure that that it's just a little bit thicker than what's already here because if you go thinner what's going to happen is that you're going to get blooms um, for example if we had all this area of darkness here and then I just dropped in a bit of water we're going to get a bloom coming coming through because uh, the water will just spread out and form an area of a clear uh, um, clearness in the center so we don't want that to happen if we want it to remain smooth all over so really just keep an eye on that and make sure that you're using uh, proportions of paint which are slightly darker slightly thicker than what's already on, uh, on the paper that you have put in there before so you're slowly building up you're going with all your really thin light colors and then you're just adding more and more paint into that mix and we're slowly increasing the darkness and uh, detail in that area so that's looking pretty good I'm gonna continue now and um, let's go ahead and work firstly on the I think I'm gonna work on the lighthouse actually I just want to get straight into it and to simplify it down um, as well and I'm gonna pick up a smaller uh, a brush a smaller brush I've got a number four round brush and I've also got a number six round brush which I'm going to just do some of these rocks and things like that as well um, so what I'll do first actually is I think I'll just add in a little bit of color for the headland um, at the bottom okay so let's pick up a bit of color I have myself some uh, this is just a bit of titanium white and somehow I don't know how but a bit of the a bit of the ultramarine not the uh, ultramarine but a bit of the cerulean blue has gotten into that so I don't know how it's done that anyway uh, I'm gonna go and add in a bit of this uh, brown this is like a burnt sienna in here okay and I'm just going to put in a little bit of this color uh, a little bit of this a little bit of this brownish sort of color around this area okay and we'll skip over some bits and pieces as well hopefully we can just get in uh, this indication of a kind of rocky area because it actually starts out lighter on the top as you can see and then it goes uh, darker down the bottom so a dry brush as well notice how I'm just allowing it to skip over the paper and do its own thing in areas that's going to be pretty crucial now for the lighthouse I'm going to be using some neutral tint just a light sort of uh, wash of this well not light but uh, medium wash of this neutral tint okay it's still going to be pretty viscous but uh, we're not obviously we're mixing about 50 percent 50 percent color to 50 percent water and uh, the most important part is the top part of the lighthouse where we just have to detail a bit a bit more so we know that there's a kind of 
triangular sort of section on top. If we just sort of uh, imagine it's about here and we'll just draw in the top part there and then it sort of goes up like that. Okay, and then, and then it comes down like that. And then up the top there is a kind of a point or something like that. Um, you know, it actually gets warms a little bit up. So it's a kind of a, almost like a purplish color as we move down like that there, that becomes the uh, that little section underneath. And then as we move down the page, um, we're going to have a bit of darkness underneath there like that. But really there's a, a fair bit of darkness on that right hand side of the lighthouse like this. And I'm just, you know, going through with this little number four round brush and darkening that right hand side a little bit. Okay, but I'm also allowing some of this to mix in to um, the top part of the lighthouse like that. But it's a soft kind of uh, uh, sort of edge. So here I'm just trying to soften that edge a little bit. This is going to help indicate that, you know, this sort of cylindrical shape of the lighthouse. Okay, something like that. Okay, and that's about all I think that we need to really put in there. I mean, there's also this door that we can add in here at the bottom something like that there's a couple of um oops you know a couple of windows or something like that running through there um i may actually want to darken a little bit more on that right hand side as well um, to create more of an edge against the sky like that But we're being very careful. I don't want to overdo it. Um, the accuracy of this shape is uh, so important as well because it's the only man-made uh, object really out there in the distance. Okay, so I think that looks. I think that looks all right. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to leave that, and we'll work more on the uh, rocks and things down below. And I'm going to be using a smaller brush here this is a uh, this is a, a uh, what is it a flat brush a smaller flat brush here I've somehow left on all this paint accidentally onto this flat brush and I'm trying to just get rid of it um, what is this it's I think it's a bit of ultramarine or something that I've left on so I'm gonna I'll probably have to go with ultramarine oh, it's a uh, violet I think yeah so Let's go ahead and I'm going to use this mixed in. It doesn't matter exactly what color it is. It's, it's basically just a dark area below. And I'm going to be trying to get in some uh, dry brush work as well. So indicating some rocks and things like this. Okay, where we can just some areas of darkness like that. Uh, cutting around some spots like this here. Uh, you know it takes a little while to to sort of get the hang of how to do this um, but we're re really the trick is just leaving a bit of you know a little bit of light on the top section of those rocks dry off that brush and we're creating these kind of dry brush strokes and areas like that okay like that running further down the page there here, uh, this part hasn't completely dried yet, that's okay, we can still go into it, and it comes out all the way here into the water, actually, and stops there, but uh, the bottom part of all this area is actually pretty dark, so I'm going to go ahead and continue adding a little more colour in this section, okay, just sort of nail it down, um, a bit more to the to the ground, uh, not the ground, but you know the the rocks near the bottom anyway, and you know I always take a look, um, step back as well, just to have a look to see if it's making sense. So always um, try to remember to just step back from your painting a little bit, just look around and see if it's uh, reading okay. And what I mean by that is just the the tones are not too dark or too light. You know, down the bottom here, we do have a bit of this land. Um, it's kind of a lighter 
I'm just trying to pick up a bit of this color here, which is uh, buff titanium, okay? Because there is a little bit of land down there as well. Okay, so we're almost done really with this section here in the back. It's just, you know, like I said, we're trying to indicate some bit of land that the lighthouse is uh, situated on. So indication of that, like there, I think also what we can do is, you know, you, there might be some areas where it just looks too flat or you want to increase something. You can just do something like that, just add a little bit more of a variation to the top part of some of these rocks. Just, just like that, okay? And there we go. All right, um, we can always have a go later if it's not dark enough. Now, down here we have some boats and uh, I'm going to just put in a little bit of color for the base of the boats. Again, this kind of a cooler color and not too dark as well. Just a, one line like that, another line here like that. Uh, maybe, you know, a mast or something there. It's not, um, you know, certainly not too detailed. Like that, you know, you can even perhaps color in one of the masts and just see what happens. Uh, just dark, a little bit like that. Yep. Bit of titanium white, perhaps for this one here. Just to bring it out a little more. But uh, simple, simple works best. Okay, now moving further down the front, what I'm going to start doing is put in some uh, indications of uh, just some smaller waves and things, some sharper waves and areas. Because we do have all of this um, very light, soft um, bits and pieces in the, you know, soft uh, waves. And I think we can put in some of these waves, which are sharper running through in areas, not too much because I want to preserve this light and this uh, soft kind of feeling. But I think what it will do as well is because we've got all this hard sort of shapes up the back here with the, with the rocks, having it carry down a little bit like this, it's going to just help uh, join up the scene better because it's, uh, yeah, we've just got a lot of hard shapes there in the back. Might be an opportunity also to maybe get in some a little bit of reflection for for the uh, lighthouse like this okay slight reflection there yeah. um, bit here here okay you can go a bit more darker down the bottom the waves always get bigger down the bottom so um, that's something to to remember because uh, due to the perspective of what's happening we're just going to have a lot more uh, smaller sort of shapes than the background as we move further back and then it's going to just turn into softer uh, so sort of larger shapes down the front that's what I'm trying to say okay some more there a bit more over here okay there, 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 a bit more here, okay, around here we just got to be careful again, this sort of transition area where it's just can be quite, we just got to be very, very um, careful with some of these um, bits so that it's not too obvious, tiny little waves and things in that background. That's about all I want to do uh, to add in what's in there. Okay. Okay, so we're moving further down the front. And the, the interesting thing as well with some of these uh, waves is that they also help to draw out the rocks. Okay, so you'll notice we've got all these rocks here in the, in the uh, foreground as well, where we've got the people and uh, what have you. So this will help um, to just define some of them a bit more. Okay. 
that. Bring that bit of that lighthouse down a bit more to the ground as well. It's not, like I said, I don't want to overdo it. The reflections, just an indication like that is fine. Here's some of the rocks, just using this paint to cut around areas of the rocks like that. You're kind of just making a judgment call really with the level of darkness in here. Neutral tint, we can use that to darken even more. And because the brush that I'm using is pretty small, it automatically just controls uh, the brush strokes so that it's not overboard. I've accidentally got one going in the wrong direction, but that's okay. You can use the finger there to just rub it out. Okay. That's looking good. Now I'm going to just start putting in the stuff in the foreground and for that I'm going to be using again around a flat brush I mean so uh, again I'm just going to pick up some darker sort of colors this is just brown bit of, um, bit of brown here and uh, look, we, we know that we want to get in a bit of a shadow here um, there might be some darkness here you know maybe some a bit of light on the on the front of that rock there and then it just comes down a bit of mixing into the into the um, to the back is fine as well so you know more of rocks okay a bit here let's have a look at the reference probably some more darkness um, in this one here like that Bit of darkness in this rock. Like that. Here. Yeah. Sort of uh, the light catching on the top parts of the rock. Like that. Uh, but again, it's not going to be completely like that because we're going to just get in some bits and pieces in there as well. So usually what I do is that I will dry the brush a little bit and then just drag it over the top of areas to create a kind of textured effect on some of the, the rocks and things. You can do it down here as well, down the bottom. Okay. And a bit of that textured sort of look on top of the rock. Um, you can get in the bottom of this larger rock here. Here. Yeah. Here. Over in the side. Yeah, here. Here. As well. You know, we've got all these figures, and the figures are going to be. Uh, quite essential too. Um, I might actually pop them in just a moment. But you see how I'm connecting these rocks a little bit with the water as well. Okay, so that it doesn't look just too disjointed. Okay. You need more, if you need a bit more color down the bottom, just add some more in. Okay, but remember that you can still add in another layer on top of this. Don't feel like it's the be all and end all at this stage. Um, the figures, time to just get in a bit of color. I'm going to be using neutral tint and a bit of this leftover color here on the palette to get them in. Let's start out. I just want a silhouette, nothing too fancy. Just a silhouette there. Okay of that figure looking over out into the, the distance. This is 
get the legs in. A bit darker for the legs actually. Another leg here. There. We've got a figure here just sitting down. Um, looking out. Like that. You know, I might get a little shadow, a very, very slight sort of shadow running behind them, um, kind of like this, running downwards perhaps, to indicate um, the light from that back end uh, area. Okay. Fantastic. Some more darkness down the bottom. Okay, a little bit more to uh, bring everything together. Again, you know, some of these spots you might feel they look a bit too dark or there's um, too sharp. You can soften off some of the edges too. I reckon I'll just let that dry actually and we'll come back to it in a moment to to see what else we can do. Um, the sky, we can also put in a few little birds. So I've just picked up a bit of paint, a tiny bit of that leftover paint there, and I'll just drop in a few little birds in the horizon near the lighthouse especially, okay? Near these boats as well. It works best if you put them in these areas which are uh, lighter because you're going to be able to just see them better. You're just putting these almost like little V-like shapes in the sky to get in um, basically a few indications of these birds. You can have a few up the top here as well. Um, you know, there's a, that's a larger one here, for example, here, 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 here. Um, I wouldn't overdo it though. So just look back, stand back and have a look at the scene and just see if it's making sense to you. Um, okay, and we'll let this dry a little bit. One of the things I definitely notice about this palette is that it really helps me to uh, just mix colors more accurately. I've got more space to do it and uh, certainly you can use larger brushes without the brushes getting uh, mixed in with other colors. Each of, the, each of, the, uh, each of the, the wells are quite large. I mean this is a three quarter inch brush here and you can see I mean it's just quite, quite a lot of generous room there. Um, you know, you can even mix cool colors into the same well and it doesn't run into the other parts as well. So certainly uh, this is a, a really great palette that I'll be using for larger paintings. Uh, I don't know if I'll be using it for smaller sort of sketches and things like that. I, I certainly think it's it'd be great to use it for smaller paintings as well. It's just I don't know if I can fit it all on camera for, for next time. But... Um, yeah, 
let me know what you guys think if you want me to um, yeah, use this in a smaller painting. Um, I've also put the link in the description if you uh, would like to buy one of these too. So last bits and pieces that I'll do is just uh, some smaller, just basically some small finishing touches. Okay, it's mainly to these rocks because uh, I do think they need to be, areas of them just should be darkened a little more, just bring out some more contrast. So, you know, this is just a bit of neutral tint plus raw umber here. Dry off that brush and I'm just going to go in and put in some bits like this, okay, to just draw out, see the shadows behind these rocks there and um, create a little more detail a little bit and a bit of a disruption as well to all this smoothness in here just it adds some texture in areas so I won't do it to all the, all the areas but just some of them like this you'll notice that there will be a bit more of a darker spot in between that texture on the rocks as well maybe a little bit of this a little bit of that texture like that okay using that edge of the brush when you're texturing the darker bits, you just got to go darker, pick up darker paint and uh, drop it in. Oops, too much paint. So, a bit of darker texture in this one, like that. Even on the figure, I thought maybe a bit of darkness on that left hand side of that figure as well would be good. Um, but apart from that, I'll call this one finished. If you like this video, check out the playlist on the right. I release new tutorials and art supply reviews each week to help you progress faster in your watercolour journey.